appreciate that. All right, uh, in our Investor Eye segment, we have alternative credit platform Black Soil, which has closed the second quarter with $44 million deployed across 11 new deals and growing its investment portfolio by 33% year on year. Now, with this, its total investment portfolio stood at $80 million, which is roughly around 640 crore rupees across 24 new deals in the first half of this financial year. It has also raised $40 million in debt from its investors as well. Joining me now to talk, to talk about these investments and the outlook for the year ahead is Ankur Bansal, the co-founder and director at Black Soil. Ankur, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Thanks very much for your time here. $44 million invested in 11 deals across, uh, you know, Freed, Tiger, Stash, Pin, Credit Right, and so on. What is the underlying investment philosophy and what are the check boxes companies and founders have to take for you to consider these kind of investments uh, in this environment? Oh, first of all, thanks for having me over again. Uh, thanks for letting us share our update for this quarter. Uh, it was a busy quarter. Uh, despite the funding winter on the debt space, on the alternate credit side, we continue to be quite busy. Uh, the demand comes to me be quite high. I think this year already we have seen more than 200 companies approach us for debt. Uh, so the bar for you know raising capital and or deploying capital from our side is obviously quite high. Uh, we're looking for businesses, which obviously in today's market conditions, everybody is looking for sustainability. And uh, we are finding a lot of these businesses out there who are now trying to obviously adhere to the new market conditions and building a business which is robust and you know taking conditions uh, very very seriously about you know where the business is headed. Uh, a lot of the companies that you speak about, we have been able to see that they are growing uh, in a profitable manner. They are improving their unit economics. They have a good underlying demand. Uh, they are a category leader, and at the same time, yeah. they are very close to profitability. So some of them are already profitable, some of them are at least okay. close to that. So that for us is very critical. Well, uh, that, that, that's quite uh, the selective figure, 11 out of 200 companies that had approached you. But, you know, uh, you've said earlier as well that you're looking to diversify and that is one of the cornerstone of your investment strategy. But are there specific sectors and themes that look more promising than others? I mean, for instance, you've invested more in financial services than, say, some of the other ones. Uh, why is that and what are the trends you are seeing playing out uh, when it comes to debt versus equity, check sizes, etc.? So you're right. So this sec this obviously we are not a listed company. So our you know quarter and quarter may not be the right way to look at the metrics. Right? It's more about the funnel of the kind of transactions that are coming our way. So financial institutions and you know the fintech space took a lot of more capital this quarter. Uh, some of them are private equity backed companies. That might be in traditional NBFC space. I seeing a lot of action on that front. Uh, from a sector perspective, we continue to be bullish across sectors. We are overall bullish on India. So I think the startup ecosystem theme or the new economy theme continues to be the same. Uh, it's more about what kind of business you're building because each sector is very large. In healthcare itself, there are different kind of business models out there. Uh, what we did in the last quarter was more around, you know, insure tech. And the next quarter that we're looking at is around diagnostics. So there are like the themes keep changing in each quarter, but overall themes obviously are very good. Uh, they can't. They need to have a moat. They need to have some kind of a branding element to it, or they have to have some kind of a unique uh, characteristics that yeah. makes the business stand out, right? So we are seeing that FS was higher because hmm. there is money is raw material, right? There is always going to be need more and more capital. Uh, so and today with after lockdown period, etc., hmm. we have good demand for uh, capital coming their way. The entire portfolios have you know been completely, I would say, cleaned after the entire uh, lockdown period. Restructuring sure. has happened. The write-offs have happened and now they're on the growth part and they're doing at the same time profitably. So that sort of really mm -hmm. helps to sort of figure out those businesses. And uh, most of them are private equity backed. So the corporate governance also becomes a key sort of, you know, check All box. right. Uh, you know, but Ankur, you've also now raised this $40 million of debt. So with that, how much more are you looking to invest in the remaining half of the year or say over the next 12 month period? I think we will uh, end up deploying in the next four to six months itself, uh, depending on the quality of pipeline that we have. Okay. Uh, being, a, being a lending platform, we are raising capital continuously. It's like you know, it's it's like any other startup founders also raising capital always. So we are. Uh, and today, more and more banks and institutions are opening up to this space. Uh, they are also liking the fact uh, this is a sector that they don't have direct exposure to, and through us, they get an exposure to a various different set of companies that is very difficult to underwrite in the traditional mindset. So with the entire advent of private credit that is happening and structure that becoming important uh, and flexible solutions is what new companies are looking for. Yeah. Uh, so players like us who have been doing this for a while, 
are able to attract that kind of debt and it's sort of very positive conversation we are seeing from multiple mm. private banks and even PSUs uh, who are looking to sort of you know uh, get on to not yeah. only at the <clears throat> NBFC market, but also get into co-lending kind of opportunities so there is uh, enough action happening on that front uh, because more and more from a lender perspective it's a great scenario uh, since everybody is looking to reduce the losses right that is the theme and uh, more the profitability yeah. or less burn is sort of a better way to underwrite uh, for companies like us. Hmm. You know, um, Ankur, finally, you know, this year so far, I think three of your uh, portfolio companies, I think Yatra, Idea Forge, and Selecor Gadgets have gone public. Uh, you know, give us a sense of, uh, you know, is there something else lined up for the remaining part of the year? Uh, not next for the next six months, uh, but I know that for now most of the startup companies, uh, IPO is now a very very serious way of you know uh, providing exit to their existing backers and even for them to go to the next level of growth. Uh, mm -hmm. So IPO is now is no longer sort of a concept for most of them because it's now uh, been tried and tested by multiple different uh, kind of companies out there, and uh, it remains to be the sort of the next north star for most of the boardrooms to sort of reach right. And uh, we have seen people start engaging with uh, investment bankers and IPO bankers two, three years in advance so that they can start crafting the story, start putting their accounts yeah. in place, putting their uh, corporate governance structure, the board structure, etc. Uh, coming in a way that sort of uh, they're ready to become an ipo -able company. And thanks to the listed markets, everybody knows uh, that loss-making theme will not make the cut. You need to be sort of sustainably growing and at the same time providing uh, a space for investors to invest, which is not available in the listed space. So I think all these three companies sort of, you know, fit that bucket. Yeah. IF was in the space has proven that. Uh, Yatra, obviously, there is a couple of listed yeah. companies on that side, but, you know, travel obviously is a very hot theme. Uh, and third, Cellcore is again in the space of, you know, consumerism, where uh, at the bottom of the pyramid also there is a requirement for providing gadgets, etc., which uh, people need at a different price point, which cannot be provided by the uh, I would say the top tier OEMs that are there in the market. So yeah. I think uh, there is good growth happening across the space. Of course, sure. winter will remain, but I think uh, hmm. high quality businesses are going out and executing in today's times. Um, Ankur, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much for your time here on CNBC TV 18. We, we look forward to speaking with you another time. Thank you. Thank you for having me over. Thanks a lot. All right. With that, it's time.